Hello and welcome to the Slippy Limpets video. We are on the beach trying to catch some cod. Uh, I've got a line in the, well, I've got a bait in the water already, and I've just missed a screaming bite. Can't believe it, but uh, it's only been in 10 minutes, so it's a good sign. Conditions wise, this is three days after my previous video. And if you've seen that, you know I've mentioned that there's a big swell. There was a big swell and a northeasterly blowing, but I didn't, it turned out to be half as bad or good, whichever way you look at it, as uh, what was forecast. I've come out to try and catch the tail end of it because there's plenty of colour in the water and there's about, I mean, uh, Magic Seaweed said there was a three foot swell or a metre and a half, but it's, it's, it's not that, it's about a foot maximum. Um, and it's a small tide, but there's loads of colour in the water and it's just after a northeasterly, so conditions uh, are pretty good. In fact, they're the best I've had all year so far. I arrived just after high tide and I'm fishing tide down at the bottom, basically. Uh, low tide's at about half eleven or so. Let's get to it, yeah? Let's see if we can get a, another fish on the shore another one or any fish on the shore but uh, I'm hoping tonight because the conditions have been pretty good that the size stamp might increase fingers crossed are all right I've had a couple of nibbles but uh, the lead's just slipped off the rotten bottom <laughs> let's get another one on now there's not much swell I wonder should I go down to a plain lead and there's not much swell I like a plain lead just because it moves around in the uh, in the current no, they normally find the divots in the places where the same places where the food would congregate. But if there's weed in the water, then that might cause an issue. So didn't have any weed on that cast. So uh, I'm going to put this gripper on, and then I can always swap over later on. Bait wise, I got some. Dirty squid, some cart, and some yellows. I'm surprised at the yellows because I'd, I had to buy them off the internet. I pre ordered them last week and they didn't have any yellows, so I bought uh, some blow lug and they've sent us yellows, <laughs> which I'm over the moon about because uh, these fish are way better than blow does any day. Although I did order half a pound of yellow, uh, sorry, blow. Blue lug and uh, I think I've probably got 20 yellows but got more than enough bait it was actually late I, I didn't think it was going to arrive so I left to uh, to come up where I've come fishing I was about uh, a third of the way here <laughs> Mrs phoned and said oh your bait's arrived I'd already defrosted some squid that I'd had in the freezer, but I wanted some fresh bait, so uh, I drove back. The uh, the air temperature is um, well, it's it's about two degrees, and it's uh, it's minus five in the wind chills. So I'm hoping that this cold snap. It's the first time it's actually got anywhere near this sort of temperature this winter I'm hoping this cold snap is going to scare the crabs away the tides are small tides oh, it's dropping off but, uh, because it's going out, I'm going to be chasing this down the beach. Watch that there. Can't believe how small the swell is compared to what was forecast.
I mean, I can walk for miles now, though. The water is dirty. I like it. Oh, that was nipple high. Unfortunately for me being a shit caster, sorry, I'm not very good at casting. It's times like this when there's a little swell, that distance is probably gonna be my friend. Luckily I can wade. So that's the next bait, second bait in the water. Just moving everything forward because the tides are there racing out now. Just stuck with another single uh, yellow tail on there. Gonna give this bait about 10 15 minutes and then uh, bring it in. I'm gonna whack a big one on. Normally, always fish with uh, fresh bait. I don't like to use a second rig, um, but because I've got frozen with us, I'm prepare a second baited rig up and ready. Um, I don't normally do it because using fresh bait, I don't want all the lovely juices of the fresh worm to uh, basically drip on the beach instead of being in the water. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rig up this running um, up and over rig and stick a squid and carp bait on and then each cast alternate between the fresh worms and frozen bait. Only having one rod that way I'll keep mixing up the baits and we can see what works. The other reason why I'm using this running up and over is because if there's any finicky fish around they won't be spooked by the, uh, the weight of the lead and then they'll hook themselves. Oop. Got a knock there. We'll shoot and stop. Wasn't a cod knock, I don't think. If it was, it was a little in. Oop. Not coming back. Keep rigging up, let that develop. Oh, that looked like the fish was hooked on there. It was going nuts. It's not on though. That's why I love fishing with braid. Get a little knock, give it a lift and a half turn, and you can tell straight away whether the fish are on. It's no stretch like mono, and uh, you just have to wind it in this way. I can leave the bait out there. Since it hasn't moved very far, hopefully, whatever was eating it before might come back. It looked a bit like a coolie hit, which isn't great. But big bait should deter them a little. Ah, yeah, and the other reason why I like using a running up and over is because you don't have to fart about with snood lengths too much. Oh, that's a decent hit there. I'm never going to get this rig tied. Well, the good news is that the crabs have gone because uh, this bait would have been annihilated by now. The bad news is that's two bites I've missed. Uh, speaking of moving forwards, I was watching... Oh, look, my hands are steaming. How cold it is. Um, I was watching a good YouTube channel today, a video on a good channel called Anglin Addict 75 and uh, he was fishing some big comb on Skegness, I think. He normally fishes the shingle and uh, it was funny just because he wasn't used to the kind of the beach fishing where you follow the tide out or you know, pushes you back up the beach and because they have loads of kit, you know, all these big igloos and uh, loads of different shelters and whatnot. He must have done like 50 laps up and down the beach rather than just moving everything. I'm sure would enjoy it up here, but it would be a similar sort of thing for him. Because uh, we, 
definitely go up and down the beach a lot. Thought I must have waited about 70 yards. We don't have anything like that here really. It's no sort of storm beaches so constantly moving the box and tripods and everything up and down. It's the third bait in the water now. I'm wondering whether that uh, these little rattles are from Whiten. Oh, I don't have that much experience of catching Whiten. But uh, it would explain why I'm not hooking them with 5-0s uh, with on. And they're quite aggressive little hits, so could be coolies as well, but I do normally hook them. But third bait in the water now. Maybe I might get that rig finished after all. God, this cart is dead, you're not gelatinous. Bit of an awkward looking bait. It's got a bit of a oh, extra weight around the waistline, but it'll do. Got two proud hooks. be the biggest of the season. Scrapping. Can't get it on the surface. Oh, it's on the surface now. Want to skate in. Oh, it's back under. Nice. Well, that's the first fish of the night. 50 centimeters on the nose. It was gut hooked, so it's coming back with me tonight. I'm gonna uh, feed Mrs. Limpet to myself. Maybe about three pounds. Biggest of the season so far, I think. Woo. Those worms definitely don't like cart. Now my box is a bit heavier. Yeah, let's see how far I can wade this time. I'm waiting. Bane from uh, Angling Attic 75. I was just saying about walking up and down the beach and I'm, uh, I'm doing laps at the minute. Of course I'm doing one extra with this camera here but uh, keeps you fit. Eh? That is the big bait in the water. Squid and cart. A bit dubious because I've just had a cod on uh, on fresh worms, so don't know how long I'm gonna leave this. If it doesn't get anything, then uh, within 10 or 15 minutes maybe, then I think I'm gonna put the fresh worm back on. Took a wave in the face as well. Took it in the chest, and uh, yeah, all over me boat racing, a bit of a wet knee as well, but uh, 
Never mind, how cool is down after the, all the walking I've been doing. Oh, I'm feeling good about that fish. Uh, it's not massive, but it's the biggest I've had this season. After about an hour with no bites, I thought, oh, no, I'm not going to have a fish here, but um, yeah, I did. Good little scrap as well, so uh, hopefully it's big brother or dad's around or sister or mother or someone. a better knife for doing this rather than me baiting knife. Well I just filleted my fish there and it took a little longer than uh, than I was expecting. Still practicing. Um, the tide's like, well the sea's maybe oh, 20 meters away now so I had a little bit of interest on this bait earlier on. Uh, I didn't see anything while I was filleting and it seems to be still now so um, I'm going to bring this in, move everything forward and stick a worm bait back on because uh, that's what got us a fish last time Feels a little heavier than it should. I'm assuming I've got a load of weed on it. Nope, not weed. How the hell did that thing take two five O's? I mean, it's absolutely gobbled them. Well, that's one of the milky worms. Anyone got any idea why some of these yellows or blacks or runny downs or whatever you want to call them have got like a milky innard or juice and the others are uh, uh, like red I guess or more transparent. I've got no idea. Maybe gender or something? I, d I don't know. If you know, let us know, please. Drop a comment down. There must be deeper water just past where these waves are breaking. But it looks like there's a sandbar just over to my right that's popped out of the sea. So I don't know if there's any structure left. This might just be where I caught that cod before. And then the rest of it. Oh, that looks like a bigger wave. I want to get it in the face. Oh, the moon looks mint glittering on the water. It's wrong about the water clearing up. Ah, the rest of it could just, this is a big plateau. It's getting deep quickly. Ooh. There's a big set coming. Go on, Nathan, get out the water. Uh, I've lost count because it's been so long but I think that's my fourth fourth bait in the water. Uh, it was getting deep quite quickly so managed to wade out quite a way so it helps with my rubbish casting. But I put three big worms on, got them out before they pop so hopefully they'll pop while they're out there and uh, leave a nice scent trail. We can get another fish on the shore. Yep, got it. Coolie again, I think. Oh, snag. What the hell was that?
fish is still on, just lost my weight. Thought this was meant to be a clean beach. Well, that is a canny coolie. That's uh, it's not bad for a coolie for around here. Oh, I managed to keep a hold of it so far. Even size, apparently they make good fish cakes. I've tried it, but wasn't all that impressed. I'm confused about when I lost my lead on. I was tempted to but just not bother with a rotten bottom link or line but if I'm catching something on something I suppose I better persevere with it I'll stick a bit of car in with this on the top hook Into that. It's a messy bait as usual. <laughs> there we go. You see the lines of the swell coming through. We either just spooked a fish or there's a rock there. Oh, that's a rock. Must be. That's what I've took me lead. Oh yeah, I'm standing on rock. Oh. That'd have kept the rotten bottom on. Fifth bait. Three yellows and a, and a little bit of cart on the top. It was a messy bait, but it was, uh, it was a juicy one. I thought it was clean out there, but uh, seeing a rock break on the surface as I weighed it out, still further than I could wade, mine, so it must be a pretty big rock. And uh, the ground is all cobbly, loose stones, so I think this is probably where I caught the fish before, because it seems like a big divot where I caught the cod. But obviously now, because the tide's dropped, and I'm wading over it, I can see lines of waves coming in, so I think it's just a big plateau, basically. I'm not holding my breath for much more, apart from maybe more coolies. And then obviously as the tide pushes in, it should be better, but given that that's at half eleven, you know, I've got an hour and a half drive to get home, Oh, shoot my stuff. Then uh, I might not be hanging around, but if a fishing turns on, then uh, I just might just have to be tired for work tomorrow. But one of the benefits of having the moon out, or so bright anyway, is that I can see the water and the waves, and I, I was wrong about the plateau. There was a big set before, and as the waves are coming in, they're almost breaking, maybe 20, 30 meters out and then reforming so there's a hole in front of us and then another sandbar and I'm fishing to the back side of that sandbar now oh Yep, <laughs> got it. Another coolie, I think. I think I lost my lead again. So yeah, I'm fishing on the back side of the bar. And it seems that there's still a fish or two around, just not the uh, the right species. Uh, 
God damn it. They're so slippery these things. There we go. Sixth bait in the water. Four fish. It's not a bad ratio, just a shame only one of the fish was a cod, but uh or a codling. Something is big enough for it to be a call it a cod. But I've uh, cast this out. Thought I'd try the slightly different direction. Normally I like to cast straight out because then the swell doesn't have as much effect on the line. But since there's not a great great amount of swell, I thought well, I'll try further to the left. See if there's a cod there instead of a coolie or maybe slightly deeper hole than Give it 20 minutes and see what turns up. Oh. A slack lined is there. Just a little thump and then uh, no tension at all. Fish was either not hooked or didn't have the bait fully in its mouth or I've just pulled the hook out of its mouth. I'm, I'm not sure, but uh, oh, it's normally a sign of a cod or uh, <laughs> I hate to say it, but I don't hate to say it, but uh, cod or a bass. It's rare to get a slack line from a coolie. Damn, that's two good bites on this uh, this cast. Maybe all the talk of ratios jinxed it lit earlier on. Ten more minutes and a fresh bait. Oh. Oh, there's another good hit there. I don't want to put the rod down. <laughs> Think. We're trying to justify what's happening here. And because we're at the bottom of the tide, it is a thought anyway. Because we're at the bottom of the tide, I'm fishing into pretty damn shallow water and I think what's happening is the fish probably coolies are charging around because it is such shallow water they're not just cruising about you know maybe they're a little worried about getting trapped I don't know I'm just clutching at straws here but Two really good bites in a slack line and no hook up so I think the fish are moving really quickly. Because after one hit they're not coming back so and typically a cod would come back straight away once I'm holding the rod but these aren't. Apart from that slack liner and like I say you don't get 
slacks from Coolies. Oh. Yeah, not much bait left on there. Obviously, been uh, nibbling away at that panel. I had the cart on the top, so uh, maybe I might stick a bit more cart on. Oh, this elastic is horrible. Thick and not very stretchy. Last cast, come on. Let's get another cod on the beach. <laughs> that didn't take long to get a bite. Felt a little more, bit more cod like that one. Or of a sluggish pull rather than a, a rattle. Turn my torch on and it Trying to turn my torch on and uh, it spat the hooks right in the shoreline. Should have just kept winding. That was definitely a cod. Just gonna have to have another cast now on. <laughs> oh, I'm smarting at that. That is irritating. At least the bait was only in the water for five minutes. It's a good sign. The moon's gone behind the clouds, so the fish and the tide started pushing, so maybe the fish are a little bit more confident now. Definitely need a baiting tool. <laughs> Look at the state of that. Oh no. That went in the opposite direction, a cod hole. No, it definitely is the last cast because I'm out of worms. I've got to know I've got a load of frozen bait, but uh, it's getting late. I'm going to be up early for work. But I can't, I can't leave after uh, Luke dropping a fish, especially a cod. It's been something like five hours since, uh, no, four hours since I've had, no, yeah, three and a half, let's say, <laughs> since I've had a cod. That's what we're here for, so I feel good if I went home and, uh, no, I've just dropped a fish right on the shore. 
try to get that cast in the same place but um it wasn't as good a cast as the previous one and i think it went uh slightly to the right rather than to the left where i wanted it loads of cloud cover now in an incoming tide so Totally cast this into the wrong spot. Livid. And that previous cast, I was into the fish immediately. And it was maybe three or four minutes until I had got that cod. Now it's ten minutes and I've had two little rattles on this and I can see my lines kind of to the uh, to one o'clock whereas my previous cast was more more over to 11 and I know I didn't cast it as far this time Get at the shore, obviously. <laughs> well, not the cod we were hoping for, but uh, that's the last fish. <laughs> well, thanks very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, it's been a cracking little session. Well, not a little session. Been fishing for six hours, so it's been a cracking session. Um, nice cod, probably the biggest of the season so far. Gonna have some nice uh, fillets from it. It's good fishing and kind of decent conditions for a change. I've been surprised in my previous sessions because uh, conditions haven't been anywhere near ideal and today they were pretty much ideal apart from the small tides and the, the smaller swell that I was uh, I was expecting some bigger swell but loads of colour in the water and uh, it's been a glorious night. It's been cold like minus four type of cold but um, very little wind so easily manageable so uh, yeah thanks again for watching thanks everyone who's joined the channel recently and uh, thank you to everybody who's subscribed really appreciate it and until the next one tight lines